In Union City, New Jersey, the nation's second largest Cuban-American community, President Obama's overtures to Cuba raised possibilities and hopes. Everyone is talking about it, says cafe owner Jose Alvarez, who came from Cuba 50 years ago. What he's offering could lift the blockade, which solves the issue for both countries. I'm here to launch a new chapter. That conciliatory message came as the president met with Latin American leaders on Friday, just days after he lifted decades-old restrictions preventing Cuban Americans from traveling and sending money back home. In Cuba today, the signs of a thaw in the relationship were welcome news. In the end, he says, this is going to help the people of both the U.S. and Cuba. Any kind of reconciliation between the two countries after such a long period has to be beneficial. Sentiments echoed in Union City inside restaurateur Michael Puebla's kitchen. It's what everybody's been waiting for. Since Obama stood there and he started talking, it was like hope all over again. Puebla and his mother came to the U.S. six years ago. Their cafe supports relatives back home on the island. Here, the reaction to the overtures from both sides is overwhelmingly positive. But the shift in U.S. policy could pose a new dilemma for Cuban Americans. It would mean it, maybe even that a lot of us could go back and even live over there if the circumstances are, are good. After 40 years in America and with American grandchildren, Barber Victor Perez says he'd go back to visit, but to stay, no. But when we asked Norris Puebla whether she would choose Cuba, she said, I love this country, I love the United States, but there's nothing like your homeland. Possibility and promise in a relationship that's been frozen for so long. Michelle Miller, CBS News, Union City, New Jersey. It's been a busy week for President Obama. In addition to yesterday's overture to Cuba, the administration on Thursday released those memos detailing the Bush administration's justification for using extreme methods of interrogation by the CIA. And on Tuesday, the president gave another major economic address. So joining us to look at the president's busy week is CBS News political analyst John Dickerson. John, good to see you. Let's start talking about Cuba here. After 47 years of the embargo, why this now? Well, because the president, uh, two reasons, he's fulfilling a campaign promise. Also, he wants to send a signal about the, that he's going to do business differently. Uh, turning the page, uh, no better way to do that than changing a policy that's almost 50 years old. How significant is the decision to release these so-called torture memos? He's taken heat now from the left and the right. Seems difficult to strike the right balance. Do you think he's done it? It's tough to strike the right balance. He has, I think, gotten through this tough decision. Uh, releasing the memos was a big deal. Um, he's gotten some heat on the left, but he's also got a little protection on the left. Some people basically saying, you know, it was the right thing to uh, show these memos. It's an act of transparency, but that the true transgressions were from the Bush administration, where he is, in fact, in trouble, of course, is in this notion that he won't uh, prosecute the CIA officials, other intelligence officials who committed these acts of torture. And that's where he's getting the heat, but uh, President Obama is quite popular in the Democratic Party, so as a political matter, he's probably quite safe. Finally, let's talk about the economy here. Uh, this is now two major trips for the president within just a week and a half or so. Does he open himself up at all to the notion that he's not focusing on the economy as much as he should be? His travel schedule uh, puts him out of the country sometimes at the wrong moment. He spoke early in the week about the economy. When he gets back immediately, he'll talk about uh, the economy again, meeting with his cabinet, telling them all you've got to cut some things, showing that he's fiscally responsible. So they're very conscious that while he's out of town, not talking about the one thing people care about, which is the domestic economy. So he's going to come back and talk about it right away. Okay, John Dickerson joining us from Washington tonight. John, thank you. Thank you.